What we got here? Oh, look. Circuit boards. Purple boards. Let's build something. So yeah, I got three new circuit boards. I really haven't messed with circuit boards at all this year. I've been too busy being a father, working. I think I did a few videos earlier this year, but not much. I've been kind of burned out from YouTube. And uh, I really haven't had a need for it. So I finally said, screw it, let's do a circuit board. And I wanted to revisit the little, what the heck are they called? Oh my God, I can't even freaking remember. Endless Torch. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done anything. But uh, I wanted to go back over this and try it again. I made the boards a little bit bigger. They fit nicely. But uh, instead of using the um, chip that had to be programmed, the MPPT chip, had to be programmed through Windows, I wanted to try to find a purely hardware solution to this. So, what is it? That's this one. The Analog Devices Power Management Specialized. It's an LTC4425. You can use it for either charging uh, two super caps in series or even just a single super cap. We're going to try a single super cap version of it. And instead of using the TI chip, I think I found something a little bit better, but I have to try. This is a microchip uh, MCP1624. We're going to use that as the boost circuit. So I'm going to give that a shot. I'm going to trim off all these little freaking jaggy little things right here and uh we're gonna do a quick little build video and uh see if this was a waste of time or just fun or maybe i had made it just a little bit better one of the other things i did this time which you'll notice on the old board i didn't have this is the top i didn't have a reflector for like if you were going to put a ping pong ball cut this in half and this time you have gold, so it'll actually reflect more of the light out and illuminate a little bit better. So I'm going to try that today as well. So normally I would use the pick and place machine, and I will when we do the opposite side here with all the other components. But on this side, it is literally just the single central LED. And I wanted to just do it by hand real quick. I want to try this time, instead of trying to hand, reef, uh, hand solder these afterwards, because it's not exactly a uh, hand soldering footprint. It's really meant just to be reflowed. I want to reflow the LEDs once because these LEDs can handle two reflows. Reflow it once, flip it on over, populate the other side, reflow again, and the surface tension of the solder itself should keep the LED in place and not have it move or fall off when we're going through a second reflow. So let's just get this part done real quick and easy. Okay, let's get the uh, reflow oven set up, and I got a nice little, little surprise for the reflow oven. Okay, so here's the reflow oven. You've seen it before. The only difference really is the screen. I upgraded the screen from the 8x2 character LCD to the 128x64 OLED screen. And Rocket Scream, who actually makes the reflow board that's in here, the Arduino board, um, actually has an update. I did not buy the new one. I simply wired in this one to the um, I squared C bus and gave it 3.3 volts in ground and did a bash from the old code to his new code because a few other things changed on the circuit board. So it's not a direct replacement, but changed the code. And voila, I have basically his new board just in an old board. And I love it because now I, I can actually switch from, if you look right here, it says PB for lead. You can hit the button and switch it to lead free, which is what we're gonna to use today. And I put two better buttons on here. So let's go ahead and reflow these LEDs. There we go. And we just hit the go button.
And there you go. So that is the actual reflow curve that I got out of it. That's not generated. It's actually the temperature graph. So it doesn't really get much better than that. Let's let it cool down and we'll check it out. Okay, the reflow for the LED, I just want to double check real quick to make sure that the solder didn't like short out underneath them because I hand saw, I hand pasted them. I didn't use a stencil, so let's just double check real quick. So this is ground, that's positive. Nope, that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. Okay, let's go ahead, flip them on over. Let's put some paste and some components on it. So here's the main reason why I don't like doing double-sided reflows, at least at home, I'm not really set up for it, is because once the LED is on that side, it's floppy. It doesn't sit straight whatsoever. It always wants to move around versus sitting flat. And I could just use a desk like I did in previous videos. So what I did is I took the little bars and taped it onto an old mouser box, got everything set up, and when you flip it over, there's a hole where the LED goes, so this way the circuit board sits nice and flat. So let's go ahead and paste it. Now I'm missing two resistors right here because when I first ordered this board, I completely forgot to add two resistors to the uh, charging circuit. Otherwise, it would charge all the way up to 5 volts and it would blow the capacitor. So, I had to quick respin the board. I did not want to spend an extra $8 on another piece of, uh, oh god, stencil. I didn't want to order another stencil for $7 or $8 just to add those two. So, after we finish pasting all three boards, I'll just manually go through and add a little bit of paste on each one of those little pads. That looks pretty good. Okay, this one looks like it came out perfectly fine, but these two, I have problems with my placement on this chip here. Both have a solder bridge on one side, and you can tell they're not perfectly aligned. You can see them tilted a little bit. So, yeah, I'm going to have to manually reflow those, but just for testing right now, let's get those out of the way. And we're just going to keep the one for right now. Let's see if I can get any closer with any type of focus, although I doubt it. Let me see here. Come on. Yeah, actually, there you go. Come on. It came out pretty good. Full alignment. So let's give it a shot and see what it does. And the LED is still perfectly intact, although I did get a little bit of schmutz on it. That's interesting. I don't know how the heck I managed that one. But it's okay. It's not going to bother anything. What about the other two? No, those two came out perfectly fine. The LEDs are fine. Now, in theory... The charging chip on here should pull a maximum of 2 amps at 5 volts from USB. So I got this set up here, plugged in, and let's see what happens. Flip it over. Okay, we're pulling a half an amp. Yeah, she's charging. Only about 400 milliamps right now, but maybe it ramps up a little bit later on. It's been about a month or two since I read the data sheet on this, so I kind of got to refresh myself. So let's let it go for a few minutes to see what it does as it gets the voltage up higher. Well, the light just turned on, and this is definitely a lower voltage than what the uh, TI chip was using before. So get back there. Come on, get a good contact. I think it turned on like 575 millivolts, which is really freaking low. I love it. The TI chip, I think I needed either 700 or 800 milli eh, milliamps, 700 or 800 millivolts for it to turn on. So this one turns on lower. So that's definitely working for it. So it didn't change our amp draw. It actually, we're down to 0.38 amps. 
but we're still charging so let's just let it go and see what it does okay so now we're going to do a little experiment just to see if the different boost chip that i'm using on actually the new one is better than the old one now i know the old one on the low which is two milliamps and this one is just hardwired set for two milliamps for the leds this one would run about 45 hours or so now both of them are fully charged they both have their little green leds on down below and what i'm going to do is i have a little camera sitting right here it's going to do a time lapse and take a picture every 80 seconds so this way i don't have to sit here and babysit them for practically 50 hours and see which one turns out first so let's go ahead and switch over to the time lapse real quick well at least the end part of it there's no reason to watch up two lights just going on for 50 hours but we'll show the last little bit and see which one actually runs less but before i do that let's just show real quick that the voltage is really close so um that side's positive Okay, old style is 2.645, and new style is 2.69. Okay, so this has got extra 5 millivolts, big freaking deal. But basically, they are charged. So let's go ahead and start this one. Once I find the record button, because I haven't used this camera forever. And there we go. So we will come back to this in roughly about 50 hours and see where we end up at. Okay, so the endurance test is done. And after going through the time-lapse video, I basically got the old version here, which is still ever so slightly flickering. I'm not sure if it'll pick up on camera, but it's basically useless. It started losing its power and started this flickering thing after about 34 hours. Now, the new one, it died out real quick when it was time to do it. It doesn't do this flickering thing, but it made it to 39 hours. So, and this one was charged an extra 9 millivolts. So, an extra 5 hours does not account to f 9 millivolts. So, that was not the big deal. This one actually runs slightly better. And actually, with me touching it, actually just started lighting up just ever so slightly again. So, yeah, they're drained. Let's see what voltage they actually went down to. And my cables are twisted as usual. So let's see here. This is positive. That's negative. This thing's flickering at 356 millivolts. And this one's at 350 millivolts. So they drained about the same amount. This one just seems to be slightly more efficient. So even though the charging on it really sucks, so apparently this charging chip that I tried using, uh, I just can't get the program right. Even after taking off the resistor, trying to throw it directly into LDO mode, it only wants to do a half an amp for some stupid reason. So I don't know. I'm, I'm going to wash my hands of it. But... At least it's not a complete failure. So I will continue using this boost chip from now on. I want to look into another Texas Instruments um, supercapacitor IC for charging a single supercap. So that's probably going to be my next version. I'm going to use this boost chip with a different charging chip. And I also want to um, get switch over from micro USB to USB-C since it can handle the current a little bit better. But there's a lot more pins. So I have on order a um, USB-C breakout. So this way I can fiddle with it and play with it a little bit. And I'll probably make a video of just that, trying to compare between micro and mini USB, because it's the same amount of connections, versus USB-C for basically just general power delivery for stuff like this. Nothing major. But there's a lot more pins to play with. And I'll make a whole video of that separately. So that's it for now. I call this a partial success or a partial failure, and we'll move on from here. So probably give me another month or two. I need to look into that other chip a little bit more and redesign, get some boards made up and everything. And I'll come back to this probably around Christmas time. So thanks a lot for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. And I will see you next video.